deep inside my heart I've got this everlasting light is shining like the sun It radiates on everyone And the more that I give, the more I've got to give It's the way that I live, it's what I'm living for Oh, Oh, good morning and aloha. aloha. Ooh, there's a nice little buzz again this morning. Love it. Well, my name is Michelle LeMay, and I am on the board of trustees. I am a practitioner intern. I'm also going to be sharing what's happening this week because we've got a lot happening. So everything that I'm sharing is also on the program that you received as you entered. And starting off this week on Wednesday, it's going to be the Spiritual Living Circles, which is Anna Myers does this one in her home up in Princeville. And they take an article out of the Science of Mind magazine, and then they discuss it, and they circle up about um, once a month. So this is going to be this Wednesday. You can buy the Science of Mind magazines out back in the bookstore. However, you don't necessarily have to have one to attend. But if you want to have one anyways, they're really great. This month is really extra phenomenal because it has an article about Ernest Holmes, who's the founder. So you may or may not know much about him. But if you would like to learn more, it's definitely a great, uh, this is a great month to do so. And then on Thursday evening, the Revs are doing a really special one-time only workshop called Love the One You're With. Yeah. And that means love you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, exactly. It's all about loving me and each other and ourselves. So that's going to be Thursday from 6 to 8.30. And we do have a sign-up sheet on the back. It's $20. You don't have to pay today, but if you want to, you can as well in the bookstore. But the sign-up sheet is so the revs know how many materials to prepare for the workshop. So if you know you're going to come, please make sure that you sign up. If you're teetering, we just encourage you to make a decision to come. <laughs> and then Friday night is our spiritual cinema. The last Friday of every month we have this, and it's going to be The Wizard of Oz. So it starts at 6.30. It's also going to be Sue Buckley's birthday. Yay! <laughs> and it happens to be her favorite movie. So <laughs> which one, what? The Wizard of Oz? I'm assuming the original. Yep, the original. Yeah. I didn't know if there was another one. The good one, yeah. And of course, there's always popcorn and discussion after the movie for those who would like to stay because we always like to circle up and see what we got out of the movie. And then on Saturday, we're having a women's clothing swap and potluck. Yay! Why aren't you screaming on that one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're already here. I know, it's such a big week. So that's going to be 11 to 1 right here. It is potluck, and we ask you to bring your gently loved clothes preferably washed and we are going to have we've just learned a few things <laughs> from doing them before <laughs> but it's definitely a great way to um just gather up it's totally social ladies only but feel free to invite your friends it doesn't have to be just just ladies that come on sunday so invite your friends and then next sunday we have our regular service but after service we are going to be having a potluck celebration to celebrate um the new practitioners that are here which is rob roseanne and malia so it's just the, they've been we've been celebrating them but now this is like the official where there's food because, you know, we like, we like to have the food part. So it's going to be a potluck after service next Sunday. So we invite you to stay for that and bring a little treat to share so that we can celebrate the new practitioners. All right. Well, thank you for your kind attention. And I'd love to introduce Reverend Rita and Reverend Patrick. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Oh, how's everybody feeling? Yay. Do, do. What Feels a week good. we've had. Yeah, yeah. It's been Friday, busy. what happened, Rita? Here oh, in the flying solo, but we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make. Yes. So before we start, we always like to um, recognize the peace within ourselves. So we're going to take a moment right now to light our peace candle. And. Uh, to just take a deep breath and settle into our chairs. And just to remember that that peace that we so want in this world can't be there until it's within ourselves. 
So we just take that moment to remember that within us there is a place of peace that's always there, that always resides right in the heart of our being. So let's just take a moment of silence, realizing that peace, and imagine it spreading out from ourselves across the globe. And so it is. Thank you. <clears throat> so here you are in a center for spiritual living. I am so like blessed to have come here four years ago with Patrick, well, going into our fifth year, and um, had this idea that we knew that we wanted to create our own ministry and ended up that this was the place to do it. And we have been so blessed since the moment that we did that. And it has just grown and grown. And you all sitting here today is just the perfect manifestation of an idea in the mind of God that can happen to each of us as we pick up our ideas and, and, and just go with them. So here you are. And if you don't know what that means, the Center for Spiritual Living, uh, we practice basically that this idea that's not so unusual that the divine presence, the spirit, the one source of all is who we are. And that we get to live from that place. Ernest Holmes, who is a founder, said, there's a power for good in the universe greater than we are, and we get to use it. And his whole ministry was about that, was a, just letting us know that we had the power and we could use it. And if we didn't use it, there's no point in it. Because <laughs> we'd just be there sitting there thinking about it. This is not a theoretical thing. This is something that is practical. And I think that we all need that practicality right now. So I am so grateful that you're all here. And I know that you're all using it. And, and that your lives are just getting better and better in every single solitary moment. Would you agree with that? Yes. I would, absolutely. So if you're here for the first time... Just go ahead and just give a little love with something, something. Yeah, there I see it. There we go. Oh, that's right. We have uh, two new friends here to raise their paw. And, um, and, and we see right over here, I see. Okay, that's it. Uh, I've, I know who you all are. And uh, the reason that we wanted you to identify yourself is so that we could... Sh Uh-oh. So we're going to be do doing Love the One You're With on <laughs> Thursday at 6 o'clock. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just when you think you've heard it all and had it all. That's all right. They have their own opinion. They That's do <laughs> indeed. We're always a choice, right? <laughs> Back to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, wow. Sunday mornings. Um, so anyway, here we are again. So we haven't forgot who you are, but we do have some information about you that we'd like to share. Shall we share it with them? Yes. Right? You are magnificent. Yes, yes. She says, I like that. That's because that's the truth. And so we know that about you because why? We know it about ourselves. So let's all do it together, shall we? I am magnificent. And right there in the back of the room is Otto, who just walked in. But there's also Rob. <laughs> there's, there's Rob over there with the camera. And what that camera is saying is that what we are doing here isn't staying in this room because it is going out into the world and allowing others. And we do get a lot of messages from people to say, oh, my God, it's so nice, you know, we didn't want to get up this morning, so we, we, just, we just decided we, we'll just plug you in live stream, have our coffee, don't even have to get dressed. It's 
fabulous way to do it, but we also like community. So let's say they're on the mainland. Let's just say who they are, shall we? You are magnificent. Now, to the left, to the right, tell somebody, let somebody know they're magnificent. We need to know, right, Otto? You are You're magnificent. You're magnificent. We're back again. All righty, let's take all that magnificence. Let's stand up and let's have our opening song. Let it go. Are you ready? Love is all there. Love is all there is, we're right here in love always, always. Love is all there is, love is all there is, love is all there is, love is all there is. So I know that love is all there is, and there is an atmosphere that has been created right in this room, right in this moment. And it is just coming up and out, as we said before, bring it up, look at that love, and let that love go. That is what we are doing here today. We have come together to remember one thing, and that is that we are love. And that love is not to be contained right here. No, this love is to be shared. And this is a beautiful container right here. We have just brought, come together as one, as one, one as one. So I know that everything, everything unfolds perfectly, easily, effortlessly, because it is on purpose. This love is on purpose. This group is on purpose. I am love. You are love. Say it with me. I am love. Say it again. I believe you. And so I am so filled with gratitude for each and every one of us in this room. Every one of us whether or not we have the hands of God or the paws of God. What I do know is that we are here as one. So let that be. I am so grateful. Let it overpour with gratitude as we say together. And so it is. Love is all there is, right in, right open. Love is all there is, I'm here to be old. Love is all there is, we're right here, love oh. Wide open, love is all there is. I'm here to be open. Love is all there is. We're right here in love, always, always. Love is all there is. 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 Good morning, Kauai. Good morning. Aloha, I'm Reverend Diane Decker. Welcome, and I welcome you to settle into yourself as we take a few moments for meditation. So if we'll release the joyous energy that has gone before and simply allow it to settle into our hearts and minds and take a deep breath together just as community settling in. I've brought a reading today from Reverend Edwin Gaines, and I think it's interesting that the same book is sitting on the reverend's table over there. I wonder if we're on the same page. <laughs> we'll soon find out. <laughs> so just a thought for you to take into our time of silent meditation. 
Courage is the commitment to begin without any guarantee of success. Courage is the commitment to begin without any guarantee of success. Courage 
is the commitment to begin without any guarantee of success. I know that there is only one power, one presence, and one love that permeates everything that we see and cannot see. And so in this moment, I am remembering that God is right where I am. That this power, this presence, this love, this great good is available to me and each one of us in this very moment, in this very room. And so I speak my word knowing this about each one of us, knowing that the courage to begin whatever is calling us, the yellow brick road perhaps, is right here within us as a commitment to moving beyond what has been before and stepping into the newness that Spirit has waiting for us. And so I know that this experience of newness is good and very good. That all the abundance and support needed to manifest the perfect outcome is already there in the mind of God. I claim it for each one of us now. All the health that is necessary to move us from here to there is right now available to us. And anything within us that needs this healing prayer is now perfected and healed and made new. And anything that is perfect already, as we know so much of us already is, is maintained in its wonderful, perfect wellness. I give thanks that all the loving relationships we need to support us on our journey are right here within us as we bring divine love to ourselves and to those around us, allowing that vibration of love and peace and energy to move out from us and bless the world. I give thanks that right here and right now, anything wanting to manifest through each one of us is a creative spark, impelling us to right action in our lives, and that we take that next step with grace and with ease, knowing that all is well and very well. With great gratitude in my heart, I simply allow the law of mind to do its perfect work. We live in a universe that always says yes, and I allow it to work in my life in a way that is indeed miraculous, knowing that it works in each one of our lives in the same way. And so I simply give thanks that it is already done in this moment, and I allow it to show up in all of its magnificence and watch with wonder as it does so in amazing ways. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Says 
us free There is Maria. Thank you, Malia, who was singing with me, <laughs> actually smiled at me while I was singing to her. She gets it. She gets that there is only love, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Nothing like seeing a newborn child to remember our own truth, right? That we all started in that place. Yeah, <laughs> we did. So we've been celebrating our courageous hearts all month long. And that's a really beautiful, amazing thing to celebrate. And we each have that courageous heart within us. The first week, Reverend Diane was here and she talked about taking the first step and going beyond the law of averages. And then we came back from North Carolina and we told you all about how we walked on fire. And, and compared it to walking on fire in our lives and not, and not looking at that, not looking at our obstacles, but looking forward to where we were going. And then last week we talked about forgiving and having the courage to let go of the things that no longer serve us and to live in a space of forgiveness. And we understood that that takes a daily practice to live in the space of forgiveness. And today we are celebrating... The Wizard of Oz, no. <laughs> it's so funny because in our philosophy, every minister learns how to give a Wizard of Oz talk, I guess. I don't know, I never learned how to give one and I never gave one, and I don't know how much of it's gonna come out today, but I think it's because, that's why we wanted to show the movie at the end of the month, because it's such a metaphysical story, and um, there's so much that you can gain from it. And I heard it was a political story too, but we won't go there. All right, <laughs> we'll stay with the metaphysics of it. So. Um, so we're talking about following the yellow brick road, and I'm sorry I don't have my ruby slippers on. I was going to, but I forgot to buy them, and now all I have is red <laughs> nail polish and my red shawl, so that'll have to do. <laughs> but, and plus, I don't think I can get my feet into those shoes after um, being on Kauai for four years. <laughs> but anyway, so when I was a little girl, I, was learn I, I worked with my dad a lot. And I, didn't, I wasn't just told to do things like, you know, go take out the garbage or help your mom do the dishes and stuff like that. I actually worked with him because he was, he was like, he was a Roman. And um, he, built, he built things. He was always building things. And I, was, I learned how to put plaster up on the wall. I don't remember what it's called. You know, when you do that before you put, what's it called? When you, Drywall, thank you. I learned how to, I forgot it now, but I learned, I learned that and I learned, I mean, those are the kind of things I helped him with. And then, um, but one of the things I remember doing was um, we would build um, brick pathways in our garden. And so I learned how to do that, how to put the brick down on the sand and, you know, measure everything. My dad was like a perfectionist, so everything had to be perfect and the lines had to be perfect. And it just got me thinking, I thought about that this morning because we're all, what this is about to me is not following a yellow brick road, but building one. That we're not necess that we're not following. Like I was, I, was, I was at Lydgate yesterday during the cleanup and I was, I was walking back to the pavilion and I remember them saying, you know, stay on, the <laughs> stay on the path and you'll get back there. And I don't know how. I was talking to my minister friend on the phone and I, and I, and I ended up walking off the path. And I said, oh my God, I'm lost. I don't, I'm in the campground somewhere and I didn't know, like, how am I going to get back to where the pavilion is? I'm supposed to say the prayer over the food. Okay, so um, my minister friend says to me, don't you know it's wrong to go off the path? And I was, <laughs> and then I said, and then I, I aced him because I said, unless you're building your own. Then he couldn't say anything. That was good. Like, <laughs> so I think that's the truth. We're building our own paths every step of the way. And I know that I've done that throughout my life. And in The Wizard of Oz, as we well know, they're following the yellow brick road, right? But in reality, when Dorothy is 
there's she's searching to go home again she thinks she's going to get it from the big wizard of oz and then she meets all these other aspects of herself and the tin man and all those people right and then they you know each are looking for something and wanting something that they think they don't have when all along at the end what happens they realize it was always here and so i think as i've built my brick wall <laughs> my path my my yellow brick road through my life, I think that I, I spent a lot of time not knowing it was all within me. And last um, Friday, this last past Friday, we had some beautiful people. I, I'd actually like them to stand up and acknowledge themselves because we had flying solo on Friday night. For those of you who missed it, make sure. These people, they're, oh, they're all here, I think. Yeah, oh, Ka Ka Reverend Kaya's not here. These these guys and everybody that takes this flying solo, and not everybody does it, it's not real popular because basically what you're doing is, and there's Kaya, she's here. What, you're, <laughs> what they're doing in this process of flying solo for six weeks is you're revealing your yellow brick road and your process of how you got to today. And, and, and when, I, when I, I was going through it with them, I started thinking, and they are, it's very courageous because they take something that's maybe not so easy to look at or, may, or something they want to know something deeper about and they go into it and they come out the other end with an ability to inspire us by it. And, uh, and, and then we all hold this sacred space for them to reveal it to us and, in, and to give us their gift. And I feel like that's what we're doing in life too. We're holding sacred space for each other so that we can build this yellow brick road that we're all building, our own individual ones. If we could just accept that everybody has their own individual yellow brick road that they're building and that they all crisscross and they walk alongside each other, sometimes they go in opposite directions. But if, if you've ever walked a labyrinth, not the kind that um, you get lost in, but if, you've ever <laughs> but if you've ever walked a labyrinth, you know that the path twists and it turns and it goes different directions and sometimes you think you're going toward the center then you start going back toward the outside again but it always ends up in the center because there is no wrong way we can go and for me I know through my life I went I, and as I, they were going through their journeys I remembered all the things that occurred in my life all the mistakes I thought I made all the times I thought I didn't you know, do it right. All the times I felt insecure, all the times that I did things that weren't really the best things for myself and all those things. But, you know, all the jobs I had, oh my God, I had so many jobs. I was, <laughs> the one that I never could do that everybody always did as an actor though was wait tables. And one time I did and <laughs> it only lasted, I was a singing waitress, so it only lasted for three weeks because I kept pouring water in people's scotch. So. <laughs> So I wasn't meant for that one, but I, I did all these different things, but, and I was on this, I was building this yellow brick road, but I didn't even know that I was building it really at the time because I didn't know who was building it. I thought something outside myself was building it when all the time, that's what I love about when I came to this philosophy because I realized the whole time I was the one that was building it and all those twists and all those turns that I took brought me to right here and there's not one of them that I would have missed. Not one of them. Well, maybe one. No, <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Well, yeah, you know, there's always that one you say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. But in reality, you know, it was important, right? And, and the thing is, all those paths, that path that we took and the road that we built, that was exactly the right road for us. And we did it. We built it with what we had at the time. We might not have had all the bricks and the mortar and whatever else it takes to the sand and everything, or we thought we didn't have it. So we built it with what we had, with the knowledge that we had, with the wisdom that we had, with the part of ourselves that, that um, knew what it knew. And there was always that part of ourselves that was guiding us, even when we thought that it wasn't, right? There's always, we call it the self with a large S leading the self with a small s because sometimes we just think we're so little but that large self that's within us that thing that's the spirit that's the light whatever you call it the source is always whispering do this do that it's never saying don't do this 
It's always saying, do this. It's always positive. Like we said, the universe is for us, not against us. So I know that when I found out that I was the one building the, building the path and that I have everything that I could ever require within me to build that path wherever I want to go, wherever I want to go, that that was the day my life changed. And now, like it's, we always say, oh, there's more, you know. It's not like a greedy thing. It's just that there's more to know. Not necessarily, there's more to have, yeah, but what's the good of having more if you don't know anything, right? So there's plenty of, of us Sometimes through our life, we've had a lot. I mean, I had a lot at one time. You know, I lived in a really big fancy house and, and all of this. But I didn't have that thing within me. And I spent a lot of time just sitting there sad because I didn't know who I was. So having is not what it's about. It's about understanding and knowing. And then all the having happens. It just, it, it happens. You know, they talk about, you know, Jesus... I don't know what you believe about him, but he never went and want. He never went and want. He died with a, a seamless robe and all of that. He never went and want. He, he, but he knew who he was. And we each have that same opportunity to know who we are. And how do we do that? By just doing it. By taking this opportunity to just say yes to it. And when we reach out, we reach within... It answers us. And the more that we, we allow and listen, the more it answers us and it guides and it directs us. It's just that highest self, it's that highest self that we brought, that we continue to bring, that is who and what we are, that guides our path. And we each have a yellow brick road. I know that. <sighs> I'm grateful for my yellow brick road. And I know that it's, it, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. There's no ending to that yellow brick road. And now I, I, I always want to just go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I want to say yes. Emma Curtis Hopkins, who I've been reading a lot lately, the great healer of the, of the 19, 19, 18 and 1900s, you know, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. She said that she spent so much of her life in her radiant I am letting everything dictate to her what was so until she stepped within and realized that she was creating her world by the perceptions of everyone else. That she says she was impinged with thoughts until she realized that there was something within her that could be the dic dictator of her life, that could conduct her life from her center, from her I am presence, from her e divine ego, and look out with that. And it, it's not easy to do that when you're constantly allowing yourself to be impinged by what's outside. But when you start to do that, everything starts to look different and you start to see the yellow brick roads that are being built and you start to say, wow, okay, that person's there and this one's here and I don't have to judge them. I don't have to condemn them. I don't have to get angry. I just have to live my yellow brick road and, and perhaps walk by them and, and say something wonderful to them or to keep seeing them when you can't do that in the highest and highest light. To send the love, to send the light, to send the, the peace that's within you out into the world. But it isn't going to happen if you're pulling it from without, within can only happen within. That's the message of this philosophy, that it only can happen within. So, we don't have to get anything from a wizard. <laughs> you don't have to even get it from Patrick and I. We're not your, like, what you call it, like, your go-getter. <laughs> like, your thing, come to Patrick and Rita and they'll, like, sprinkle something on you. We don't do that. <laughs> What we try to do is live from our center and, and, and possibly, hopefully, be an example. That's the only thing that I feel like I can do. Um, it's interesting because, let's see if I can tell you this in the right way. It was great. I got this metaphor because I, I, I went back to running. I, I, used, I mean, I ran my whole like, adult life, and then I kind of quit when I came to Kauai. I don't know why, but I started walking. And 
now I'm like determined to go back to running and I've been doing it pretty well. And I'm, I'm almost there where I want to be, which is at four miles. But um, Patrick do, does it too. And, and, and he's a little bit behind me, not because of any reason. He just is. And, but well, I would always time my walks so that, and my runs so that we would get back to the car at the same time. But now he's increasing. So what happens? I have to start to increase. So it's kind of like leadership. I, I'm not like leading you. I'm not um, pushing you. But what I'm doing is being pushed by you. <laughs> so I'm being pushed from behind <laughs> me. And you guys are growing. And you are, some of you pass me by, which is great. And then I have to walk faster. And I, I, it's just like, it's a thing that we do. It's just a thing that we help each other. We hold sacred space for each other. We give each other examples. I learn so much from people in this congregation every, every moment. And I, I, would, I would trust that you're learning from me too. And I just know that we can hold this sacred container for each other, be on our own yellow brick roads and, and, and give those yellow brick roads to each other and pass each other and go different directions and it still be okay. You know, some of you will leave here. Some of you only come here once and you never come back. But it doesn't matter because we're not building like, we're building consciousness. And that consciousness we take wherever we go. And that's my, like, truth for the center, is that we're building consciousness so people can have the lives they want to have and live in their purpose and live their dream, whatever that is, and, and, and reveal God. That's really all it's about, is revealing God. It's really not about anything else. Talk about dreams, goals, all that. It's just about, because when you reveal God, when you allow God, that power within you, to take you, then you can do anything. So, build your yellow brick roads. And be happy where you are, but know you can always go forward a little further, put another brick down, and another, and another, and nothing's wrong. Everything is right. And so it is. Yeah. Totally one, completely undeniably one, with no such thing as separation. What will it feel like to be free? I mean, eternally, where every breath is bliss and ecstasy. So
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was just thinking about something that Rita was talking about before I get into my Wizard of Oz, which is one of my favorite, favorite movies, is the idea of, of just something funny that when we're on Kealia, we actually plan it so that we're, we don't walk together because we do a lot together. We do a lot together. <laughs> and we do a lot together. <laughs> And so we have a little me time. And so, but it's funny because, and it's mostly a guy thing, I have to let you know, that people that you've known on the path, they're like, she's way ahead of you, man, you know. <laughs> Look at her, oh, she's, you know, come on, let's go. <laughs> and I wish I was exaggerating that, that characteristic. <laughs> um, but it's so true, though. And then I go, then I say, because I have to defend myself as a man, right? I have to go, you know, you know, I, you know, I send her ahead, and then I go, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and so finally I just go, yeah, someday I'll catch up. So when I started increasing my running, which I did all my life, until I came to Kauai, I don't know what that's all about. But when I was there, and I, and I say the guys, right? So I'm like, around and go. Because she's like, I'm there going, yeah, catch up with her. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Has nothing to do with anything. It's Kaalia path. I just, you know me, I have filters, but sometimes they just, whew. So let me tell you about my idea of the uh, Wizard of Oz, which I love. It's a growing up story for me. That's what I think of, of the Wizard of Oz. And I was thinking that Dorothy is that perfect example of, you know, you're not satisfied, you're young, you're, you know, you want to get out, you want to go to another world, you want to do something, you want to protect your dog. Um, but I was thinking about all the aspects of the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, the Cowardly Lion. And the Cowardly Lion actually is my favorite character because I've always related to that idea of that being a man and growing up, I wanted to... I always felt that I was courageous, and I know that I was, because especially what I went through as, as a child, I knew I was courageous. But there was also something that, that, that I didn't feel like I was quite the lion. You know, not the lion that, that the world shows you. You know, not the guy saying, catch up with her! You know, I wasn't that. I was a sensitive, beautiful young boy and uh, who's turned into a sensitive young man. <laughs> And we'll just stop there. <laughs> but what I really got from this, how many times do we share it with all of the Tin Man? I mean, how many times have we said, I'm not smart enough? I'm not smart enough. I, I went back to school at 50 because I had to go back and get some degrees and show everyone that I could be a 4.0 because I wasn't when I went to college before. So there's 50 grand just to prove something to myself. <laughs> but. Um, but that's the whole idea, is that, that I ha was always smart enough, always brave enough. And the heart, sometimes we think we're just ten because we're covering up all of our feelings. And all he ever wanted to do was cry. And all we ever want to do is sometimes not cry, right? So we're like in this constant battle with the attributes of this wonderful story. And I've related to, have you all related to the, these aspects at one time or another? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think that if you like the movie, if you don't like the movie, <laughs> this will mean nothing to you. Um, but if you love the movie and you understand the movie, you understand that there are so many hidden gems that are trying to speak to us in a way behind the guise of movie, behind the guise of entertainment. And this week I had an interesting experience. I wrote a blog about it, and a few of you, it's okay, it won't be the blog story from last week, but a couple of you um, already commented how much you enjoyed this idea, and it was my idea of when I was a Catholic. Is that, was anyone raised Catholic in here? Yeah, yeah. Um, just something you'll know about me, I'm, I'm not a uh, religion basher. I don't, I'm not about that. I, I get something from everything, but I remember when I was an altar boy, and I heard these powerful words before we took the Eucharist, and that just means you're taking the body of, of Jesus. He's calling now. Um, tell him I will get back. Um, 
And this was only when I'm up, only when I'm up here, because I create my reality. So it is. And this one really, really hit to the core of, and it always has, when I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And I don't know when it came up for me this week, but it really, really, and I love the word weep, because that's the, what it made my soul do. Not out of anger, not like, why did the priest do that? Why did, no. Why get you nowhere? But I really thought of it. I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word. And then I had a friend of mine, of course, because I, it's my blog on Facebook, want to let me know the modern version. I didn't know there was two versions. But um, <laughs> he let me know, that, and I still, and at first I went nice, because I respect everyone's opinion of stuff. But he said, no, 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 the, the modern version is, even though I have done wrong, you still love me, and I can have a relationship with you. And at first I went, oh, that's nice. And then I did what? Deleted. <laughs> because I can't, understanding my buddy and what he was saying, but no, that's not where I stand with this idea of, I am never, I have never done anything, nor could I ever do anything on my yellow brick road that I am not loved, ever. And you're not doing me any favors by loving me when I do something wrong. I love you even though. Uh, you ever been there? Even though you've done it, I, I love you, I love you. And that's wonderful too. But there's something deeper about this that I went to. And I thought to myself, no wonder the concept of I am God is so hard for everybody to wrap their arms around, their heart around, their soul around. And this is what made me weep. Because I want to know, even if you weren't Catholic, how many times were you told and you thought and you heard, did that little altar boy hear that? And say it by rote, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. I am not worthy, I am not worthy. And I also read on, on uh, the internet, someone wrote a question about this. And said, I, I completely understand the first part. <laughs> but I'm really curious about the second part. And I said to Rita, and I'm like, you know, I get very excited at home. I was like, Rita, she, she gets the first part. I'm not worthy. And so this isn't about blame to religion. This is about taking responsibility for ourselves and not living ourselves by rote. It is not Catholicism that did anything to me. It was about this purity of spirit that I am that heard these words and I thought, what if I took them in? What if at some part of my being felt I wasn't worthy? And I know we can sit here all day and you can say, well, I am worthy, I am worthy, and I understand that. But I thought to myself, why is it that we don't take the fullness all the time of life? It's not because we don't believe it. Our philosophy is based on belief. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes. There's no, I, I can't even imagine anyone in this room not believing that there's something grand going on, this thing called life moving through, through us, that there is good for everyone and, and it's unlimited, but is it unlimited for you? Is it unlimited for me? And so I believe it, but do I believe I'm worthy of it? And until I get that, so everyone says, well, I feel like, you know, that there's limitations. There's not a limitation of food, by the way, on this planet. If anyone's in the, under the, like if we had more, oh, Jesus is so persistent. <laughs> um, here's the deal. No, things are ringing, things are happening. And, here's, and it, this is why I weeped, because I know that the, the message is not about can we get to a belief. Can we finally, finally rest in how worthy we are of it all? 
Edwin Gaines, and if you haven't experienced her, you got to read her book. There's five in the bookstore. God is not glorified when you feel guilty or unworthy. Whew. God is not glorified when you run around playing the victim. God is glorified when you stand up and acknowledge who you are and claim your birthright. And who are you? You are a divine being, a child of the Most High. I repeat that. The most highest consciousness that could ever be. That's who we are. A person who deserves to have every good thing that life has to offer. Yes. And it will go beyond words. When I went on my search to Emerald City to find God, because that's what the wizard represents to me, right? Oh, my God. I, I, I'm not worthy to receive you, but, but maybe you have the answers, wizard. Do you? Uh, I'll be smart when, I get, when someone tells me I am. I have honored a lot of false gods in my lifetime that I was waiting for them to approve of me, waiting for them to tell me I was rich enough, waiting for someone to tell me I'm smart enough, that my heart is big enough, that I am courageous enough. And all the time, there was somebody behind the curtain who was as scared as I was and was telling me lies, not because they were bad people. They were telling me lies because they didn't want anyone to find out that they were a fraud. So let's let go of all of the blame of all those religions, all those things that we say told us a message. This is a wondrous time. This is a time I am worthy to receive it all. I am. I always have been. And that's the thing about Emerald City. They get there, right? And they're rejected at first. You know, go away, go away. Because God knows if you stay, you're going to find out who I am. <laughs> right? And he's behind there. And no one gets to see God, right? No one gets to see God unless they put up a false projection up there. You ever seen a false projection of God? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I've actually created a few for myself. Oh, weep. Weep at, at, at the most joyous part of myself. When I realize, whew, as Ernest Holmes says, we have be always been worthy to receive the good because we are the expressions of the one power. And that takes some learning. You know, I was trained for a lot of years. I don't doubt my power. I'm just not sure always how to use it. Do you ever feel that? It's not that we're not filled with power, but it's about us using it consciously. Unconscious use of this power is absolute danger. Unconscious use of the powers and very dangerous. So before we click our heels three times, yeah. I can't, thank you, Harry. <laughs> My message that came through me today is that I don't know about any of you and then watching Flying Solo on Friday, man, we are so, so worthy I was born worthy. I never have to do another thing in my life to be worthy. Except perhaps to catch up with Rita and then... <laughs> and then all my buddies will think that I'm worthy. I love you. I haven't said that in a while. I feel it, but I haven't said it. We've had it all along. Isn't that the greatest news?
that today we don't have to do anything else, no matter what's going on in your life. And I only invite you, please, when you walk out those doors, don't forget it. This wasn't a theater production that you went to the show for two hours or an hour and a half, and then you got, got bought your ticket, and then it's like, well, it's back to the real world. <laughs> real world. This is the real world. And it's material, and it's okay. For all the spiritual, crazy kind of people, did you know it's okay to be spirit? Did you know it's okay to have fun with being spirit? Did you know it's okay to have stuff? It really is okay to have stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's not, no. Like Rita said, and I'm going to really back that up, he didn't go without. Either did Mother Teresa. There wasn't a plane ticket that wasn't waiting for her for everywhere she traveled. There wasn't anything. Just because her checkbook didn't show all of the thousands of dollars, there were people surrounding her making sure that she got to where we, you're going. And that's what we're all doing, as Rita said, on this yellow brick road. We're all going to different places, perhaps, but we're all going there together. We are in this together, if you choose. If you don't, then that is fine. So I invite us, I've said this before, but I'm going to end with this quote about um, home. Because I think until we realize that home is right here, <sighs> Home is a place we all must find, child. It's not just a place where you eat or sleep. Home is knowing. Knowing your mind, knowing your heart, knowing your courage. When we know ourselves, we are always home anywhere. Yes? yes. So click your consciousness three times. <laughs> And repeat after me. There is no place like home. Close your eyes. There is no place like home. There is no place like home. <sighs> Namaste. <laughs> In the laughter of morning and star in eyes where I live, there I am with flowers filled with colors and birds filled with song. I can smile when it's raining and touch. asked Maria to sing a second song, so there'll be a second song from now on <laughs> before we go into our We want to settle in after the talk. Yeah. Right? So this is our time of um, sacred giving, and we thank everyone for their giving, for their consciousness, for the love that the center receives every Sunday and all through the week. Thank you so much, and just know that it goes to good work at all times, taking this message out into the world and we tithe 10% of what you give us back to where we feel that it is needed either on the island. Um, this week it went to Lydgate and um, goes all over the place. Went to some of the victims of the, um, this, the recent disasters that we had. So anyway, there is a beautiful affirmation in the program and as we take our giving, let's just hold it to our hearts whatever it is, it makes a difference. And let's just say this together. I freely and joyously give 
from the abundance and fullness of my overflowing wealth, and my gift goes with love as it touches and blesses Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, my life and the world. And so it is. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. blessings that are pouring forth through each one of us to bless this center and the world. And so I give thanks that the overflowing abundance of spirit flows through each one of our lives in magnificent and unexpected ways. I welcome it all and I allow it and I give thanks for it and I simply release my word into the law of mind that always, always, always says yes and more yes. And so it is. <laughs> I don't know if we have our children, do we? I thought I saw them. All right. Well, are they coming? Are they coming? Yes. So we're, gro we're growing our youth program, thanks to Janice Perez and George. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. And we also still have our teen program in process. We don't have enough teens yet to start it, but we're still working on it. And as soon as we have 10 teens to do our theater program, we will do it. So, I think we have Rustin and oh, Rowan. No. Oh. oh, we have three boys today. Wow, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. Hello. 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 We had a lot of fun today um, exploring fruits and seeds and, and um, creator and trees and all kinds of good stuff. And... We drew some pictures of trees, and um, we all came up with some ideas about what was inside a seed, and we're going to share with you. Life. Mm -hmm. What do you see in a seed, inside a seed? God. Oh. And love. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. So before, before, they're, before they leave, let's give them our blessing. It's in your program, but I'll just re, you can just repeat it after me. Put your hands up. Uh -oh. You are amazing. You are perfect. You are magnificent. We love you. And that's the truth. Yay. Thank you, Janice. You know, Janice has been holding the space for kids since the center started in the hotel in 2013, and she sat there every Sunday. We didn't have any children at all, and, but she still sat there waiting for them, and here she is still. So I'm sure we're so blessed to have her. She's amazing, and she just loves what she does. Ah, okay, so uh, all the practitioners that are going to be able to serve today, please come forward. We're all practitioners, even us ministers, before anything else, we're practitioners. 
So we have Reverend Diane, we have Roseanne and Malia and Rob back there who will be up here in four minutes. So he says as long as it takes him to upload um, the um, the video to and Dr. Peggy, you're going to come up. Oh, and Dr. Peggy's here. Good, is up. (laughs) Okay. So these people up here hold the consciousness of healing. That's what they do. That's what they're that's what they're trained to do, and that's what they've worked their life to the point that they can turn on a dime, no matter what's happening, and know the truth in that moment for you when you can't know it for yourself. So take advantage of them today and allow them to um, do a spiritual mind treatment with you. Should there be something in your life that you want to know right now, something that maybe you're looking forward to or just wanting to manifest right now, that they can just know that for you. And that's what they will do for you today. And this is a complimentary service. If you choose, they we also do practitioner sessions. Patrick and I do too. And they are done at a fee for our time. We don't we don't we don't pay we don't charge for um, prayer. We charge for our time. And so a practitioner session goes deeper. It goes deeper because we get to ask questions and really and really delve into what's going on. And then and then we pray. So, but take advantage of this today because it's very special and very beautiful and a beautiful gift. And we thank you for giving it. All right. So, is there anything else? That's it. All right. And there is a practitioner box out there for treatment. If you want to just put a prayer request in there, you can do that too. I see them back there at the table. It looks like a lot of good stuff. Anything left over from the flying solo? I think there is some some stuff back there. Yeah. We do food. We do food well. Yeah. Don't forget our (laughs) potluck next um, next Sunday. Two of them. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. All righty. So since we're going to need to work out a little bit, shall we all stand up and... uh... (laughs) Let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Love upon love upon love, all hearts are beating is one. Light upon light upon light, shining as bright as the sun. So let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine. Let us let the way of the heart lead us, help us to, to build our brick roads as we leave here, knowing that in every moment that spirit, that power, that heart is with us, leading and guiding the way. That's what I know and claim. I know that everything that's happened here today has been the most perfect thing for each and every person here in our own individual way and that we have lifted our consciousness. And I give gratitude for that and I give gratitude for each and every person who served today, who helped us to have a better Sunday because they were here giving their time and effort. And that would be Michelle, who did our announcements, and the Malama team, who I believe is Angela, Luis, and Stephanie. Is that right? I don't think, and Stephanie wasn't here, but she was out doing something else that she needed to do, and that's okay. And Reverend Diane, thank you so much for your beautiful treatment and for your meditation and for all you do for the center. And for Rob back there on live streaming, thank you so much. Aloha, Rob. And for all the people online, thank you for watching today. And to Jonathan, who just sits there in the heat back there, but he'll have curtains soon. I thank him for doing the, doing the, um, doing the sound for us. And to the flowers from Arlene, Arlena and Peter, every Sunday they just bring these beautiful flowers to us. Thank you so much for that. And Ron Stover and your team back there. I don't know who's back there. Reverend Susanna looks like. Hannah Leop. Thank you so much for serving the food and, and nourishing us and strengthening us. And Roseanne, thank you for being in the bookstore. And uh, actually, you're up here now. But <laughs> I guess Ron is in the bookstore until Roseanne gets there. Somebody's there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to Janice for the children, taking care of the children. And to beautiful Maria Christina for her music. Mahalo. And Luis for keeping the beat. Thank you, Luis. Yes. And to all of you for being here today and helping us to lift lift consciousness, which is what we did. And so now I know we take that out in the world. And as Patrick said, we use it, we live it, we breathe it, we are it. That is so. And so we just say, and so it is. Let the way of the 
of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Love upon love upon love, our hearts are beating is what. Light upon light upon light, shining as bright as the sun. So let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through. Oh, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart, let the way of the heart shine through.